Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the new brushless Ishin uh, UK65. Actually there are two models, the US65 and the UK65. Uh, they are both the same, only the color scheme differs from uh, one to the other. So let's take a look what we get in the box first quickly. So you get a manual with plenty of instructions. It uh, shows how to bind the quadcopter, the video channels list, how to do basic setup in uh, Betaflight and things like that. So it's actually pretty useful. Even shows how to calibrate the ESCs for the motors if you want to. This runs uh, BL uh, Heli Suite. So uh, you can do whatever you want and mod this thing. So this is the quadcopter, the UK version as you can see from the color scheme and it comes with a battery pre-installed the battery uses the same color scheme as the quadcopter which is really nice it's a nice detail and let's see what else we get in the box so we get this charger with six ports it can be powered by 12 volts or two uh two i think 4S battery or something like that. It has a voltage meter. It also has a USB port which outputs 5 volts so you can charge your mobile phone or other things like that. And for each port here you have two switches. One is for charging normal LiPos and the other is for high voltage LiPos while the other switch here will set up the charge current from 0.2 amps to uh, 0.6 amps so you can fast charge if your lipos can withstand all that current in the box we get another set of propellers a screwdriver a prop remove tool rubber band and some assorted screws different sizes and colors some are bigger some are smaller so probably when you are going to lose one of the screws it will be a lifesaver and in this bundle you also get another two batteries which is very good because on this type of quadcopters you only get a few minutes of flight time so as many batteries as you have the better of course the most important thing is the fact that this quadcopter has brushless motors 0603 size and this is the KV rating here 90,000 so this little thing should have some nice speed in it we'll see of course in the test flight but now let's uh, move on further with so if you want to bind this thing you need to open the canopy and it's a good fact that they have included this tiny screwdriver because you don't need any other type of tools so one screw on this side here and the other one is here all right and there is a third screw here in the rear all right and the canopy can come out or i'm just going to put it this way so I'm not going to remove the screw all the way out of course the camera is uh, adjustable as you can see the canopy uh, holds the camera in these two screws here and the camera has another protection here and you can move this you can tilt it around as you wish to the flight controller board is installed on uh, rubber insulators which should be a good thing because it will remove some of the vibrations while the bind switch, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, is this, this tiny switch here. And the binding procedure is a bit different uh, from other quads. Uh, you are going to power this on. You are going to hold this pressed for 2 or 3 seconds. Uh, it has the LED light that changes its blinking pattern. And then you are going to select uh, the... 16 on uh, this transmitter and you are going to select bind and that's it it will bind then you need to restart the quadcopter and the transmitter and you have a successful bind
and now I'm going to power this on I have created a new profile on my transmitter here and I'm going to show you some really nice stuff uh, I'm going to power this on I'm also going to turn on this test FPV monitor here and I don't know if I'm on the same channel or not nope I'm not so I'm going to search for the appropriate channel and while this thing is searching uh, I'm going to enter the uh, settings menu on my profile that I have created and I'm going to go to telemetry and I'm going to discover new sensors and look at that we have voltage we have current we have fuel you have heading which you can see works we have accelerometer and that's about it but plenty for oh no there's not we have acceleration on Z axis we have air uh, SSI and Eric's battery alright so we get a lot of information from this tiny quadcopter telemetry directly on to the screen of the transmitter and of course we get OSD full OSD uh, on the screen so it shows all the stuff that we need and we can configure this with the beta flight configurator as you can see camera looks really nice for as tiny as this thing is so that's okay at this size so now I'm going to select the next page here alright so there's a profile that I have edited a bit so I'm not going to bore you too much with this so now all these informations will show on to the main screen here if I press page and there you go you have voltage you have current you have fuel directly on the screen of uh, the transmitter and now I can arm this thing and you can see here it's arm and this thing is ready to take off and that is uh, what I am going to do now, I am going to fully charge the batteries and take it outside for a test flight. So here I am outside with uh, the Ishin uh, 65, now, now I am going to connect the fully charged battery to the quadcopter, I am going to power on the transmitter, the transmitter is in a disarmed state, alright and I'm going to connect the power connector and place it somehow hopefully level it's not perfectly level but it will have to suffice for starting it up and now let's see yes it arms so I'm going to start DVR recording I'm going to fly line of sight for now I just want to get the feel of uh, this quadcopter and some footage from its camera all right so i have image there and now i'm going to press record on the dvr and now it's recording and i'm going to place this somehow here to get a glimpse of the signal and now i'm ready for a test flight let's see how this works so i'm now armed and there it goes it's very stable it's mostly like a toy grade the small machines with brush motors it's extremely extremely stable so let's see a bit of punch test so I'm going to take it a bit further because there are some branches and now full throttle not bad remember this is only one S LiPo so uh, you will not have huge power from it and that was another punch let's see some speed now okay so that's decent And now I'm going full speed. Well, not bad, not bad at all.
Whoa, come back. And that's going with the rear. Almost that tree, if you have so, almost jumped in uh, the front of my quadcopter. That's a nasty tree, must be avoided at all costs, but it simply jumps random in front of your quadcopter, I don't know why. Well, I really like this, it's really, really, really pleasant to fly. Uh, it's not that fast, uh, I was expecting it maybe to be a bit faster, but not by much, it's just one S with brushless motors, so this thing will not burn out its motors in a few flights so that should be good and if you want speed, you can get some speed with it but don't expect it to be too fast, so now I'm going to try to switch it to uh, the horizontal mode and let's see, some of the auto flips thing so this thing needs a lot more power and the battery is over so now it's time to pack it up uh, and uh, use another battery indoor to see how this thing uh, works inside uh, of course, I'm still going to try to fly it line of sight for now, but uh, I really like uh, how this thing maneuvers. Uh, it's very predictable, it's not extremely fast, and it's uh, rather locked in. It will not wobble too much, it will not drift to any kind of sides uh, too much. So, actually, this is running uh, now just as it is from the box, no PIDs, no other settings, nothing. I didn't even calibrate the gyro, so that's how you get it out of the box. I just made a bind with the transmitter, set up my channels and uh, flight modes, and that was it. The arm switch and nothing else. 